This episode of Analog Resurgence is brought to you by Squarespace. Use the link in the description of this video or the code Analog Resurgence to get 10% off your first purchase at Squarespace. Before we get started, I just want to announce the three winners of the Lyft prize pack giveaway that I was running for the last couple of weeks. Congratulations to Joshua Sutherland, Haley Perviance, and Jan Lee. I really hope you enjoy, and thank you everybody for entering the first giveaway that I've ever done on the channel. Two years ago, I had the once in a lifetime opportunity to review the Kodak Scanza. The Scanza is a small, easy to use film scanning unit that also bears the friendly, easy to recognize brand name of Kodak. I had a lot of problems with the Scanza. Mainly the price is too high at roughly 170 American dollars. The film holders can easily scratch the film, which is a sin. They advertise it as being able to digitize Super 8, which really it doesn't. And overall, the quality of the images just isn't very good at all. But recently I was given a newer scanning unit, the Kodak Slide and Scan. Now my Scanza video is the most viewed video on my channel. Maybe you didn't know that. It kind of caught me by surprise when I looked it up. Every successful standalone piece of media needs a sequel, right? Let's take a look inside this black and yellow box, see what it's capable of, and especially how it compares to the Scanza. First up, the slide and scan can capture 35 millimeter, 110, and 126 film negatives, and it can also take 50 millimeter sized mounted slides, which is anything in a standard sized slide mount. It will capture images at a resolution of 14 megapixels or 22 megapixels, but there's not much difference in quality between the two options. The 22 megapixel choice is interpolated, which means it's basically the same as the 14 megapixel quality, just artificially enhanced. So it doesn't capture anything extra. Inside the box, we have the slide and scan unit, a USB to USB-C cable for power, a stick with a foam pad on it for cleaning inside the unit, a mini HDMI cable for connecting it to a monitor or a TV, the manual, which looks large, but it's just in a variety of languages, and the film holders. These film holders consist of a main holder that opens and then three inserts for different film sizes. I'm actually pretty surprised by these because of the quality of the scans of film holders was pretty bad. And I like them because the plastic is nice and smooth and and that means very little chance of scratching. To get started with the slide and scan, just plug the cable into either a computer for power or a USB wall plug adapter and press the power button. It is a very easy to navigate menu with big buttons on top for control. The main menu has options to set your date and time, view your gallery of captured images on your SD card, upload images to a connected computer if an SD card isn't inserted, and select your film type. We have three film types to choose from, mounted slide, color negative, and black and white negative. From there, you can choose your film size. 135 is 35 millimeter, and we also have options for 110 film and 126 film. Once you select your film type, then it brings you to the viewing screen. Negative film is inverted by the viewer to show you a positive. Using the padded stick, you can shove it into the unit and kind of do your best to remove dust or anything impacting your images. This really only lets you clean the light source on the bottom of the unit, but the actual camera above the light source is something that is really kind of difficult to get to to actually clean. So that's not great. I'm mostly gonna be looking at this for some 35 millimeter color negative film. My film is cut into strips from a lab, so it has to be carefully taken out of the sleeving. Always use some soft gloves to protect your film from fingerprints and damage. A lot of the ads and marketing for cheap units like these or phone scanning apps, all these things just kind of show people handling the film with their bare hands, and that's never a good idea. We put the insert into the film holder for 35 millimeter, and we can easily slide our film into it. It's nice and smooth, no resistance. There's nothing here that I feel is damaging the film. With the film ready to go, all you need to do is select the proper format and size on the scanner, and then you can capture to the SD card. You can easily toggle between 14 megapixels and 22 megapixels using one of the top buttons, and this is indicated on the screen as we scan. Pressing the big button on the top will save the image. We also have very basic corrections for brightness, as well as adjusting the red, green, and blue of the image. You can make little adjustments as you scan, but keep in mind that what looks great on this little screen is probably going to look a little bit different on a phone, tablet, TV, or computer screen later on. So you might either have to play around with this a bit more or be prepared to do a little bit of editing on a computer. The process is very similar to using the Scanza, but the Scanza is maybe just a little less intuitive. There are more pieces for the film holders, which is a little confusing, and the film holders are drastically worse. There's
use a little more navigating for the menus and scanning with the Scanza is definitely a longer process than with the slide and scan because the film moves so easily in the slide and scan holders that you can just move things along really quickly. The slide and scan does have these little covers on either side of the slots as well, which will help to reduce dust or anything getting into them. The Scanza is open on all sides, which I definitely feel is a worse design. Scanning mounted slides, 110 film or black and white negative is just all the same as well. It's just using the right film holder and then selecting the correct format in the menu. Comparing 35 millimeter scans between the Scanza and the slide and scan, the results are very similar, but I was actually noticing a little loss in quality with the slide and scan. Neither of these units are giving very high quality results in general, so for what it is, I'm not very bothered by this, but the slide and scan's images are maybe just a little lower in quality against the Scanza. Both units give the same file size, which is perfectly fine for getting some small 4x5 prints made or something like that for the holidays, and that's gonna be about as much as most people are gonna need. 35 millimeter is probably where the slide and scan works best, Mounted slides are okay, but it can be tough to get a good scan from a really nice vivid slide anyways, even with higher end scanners. And 110 film is just so small that it makes it hard to get a good looking result on a unit like this. I don't have any 126 film myself, but it's going to be not drastically different from the examples I've shown here on 35. Let's talk about Squarespace. Squarespace is sponsoring the video today and uh, you know what it is. There is no better way to build a website than Squarespace using their different templates to make a website about literally anything. I mean, within reason, of course, let's not go crazy. But make something that's personal to you for your work. If you want to sell something, you can do that on Squarespace. If you want to showcase stuff, you can do that on Squarespace. Combine that with their incredible support and it is so easy to do. You don't have to know how to code. You don't have to know how to do anything about professional web design because it's all taken care of for you right out of the box. Maybe your friends have a Squarespace website. Well, you know what I say? Make your own and do it better than them. Great amount of creativity is always born out of sheer spite. Just think about it. That's all I'm saying. Use the link in the description of this video or use the code Analog Resurgence at checkout in order to get 10% off your first purchase at Squarespace. My first impression with the slide and scan out of the box is that it feels pretty cheap, like it's very plasticky. The Scanza actually has a little bit more weight to it when you pick it up. It doesn't necessarily matter, but some weight to these things always helps to make it feel like there's a bit of quality and care that goes into it, especially when you're paying so much more because it has a Kodak brand name slapped on it. The truth about these scanners is that there are a ton of them out there, cheaply assembled film scanning units that essentially work the same way, probably have very much the same internals and are probably even coming from very similar or if not the same manufacturer. The Scanza, the Sidon Scan, the Kodak Mini Scanner. Also, I don't know why Kodak has three of these in their lineup because it doesn't matter. Just narrow it down to one decent enough one and then just only sell that one. They essentially all do the same thing. There's also ones like the Magnasonic All-in-One, the Digit Now. They're all going to produce very, very similar results. These units end up being more expensive because Kodak slaps their name on them and that's really all they do. This is in no way really a product made by Kodak whatsoever. I would absolutely guess that if you bought the slide and scan and also bought the Magnasonic All-in-One that is a good bit cheaper, then you'd end up with exactly the same results. There's only so much I feel like picking apart when it comes to talking about the actual quality of the film scans of this unit or this unit or any of these cheap units. They're intended for an older audience, people who have maybe shot film decades ago and all those negatives or slides are now in a box or a drawer somewhere and they haven't been seen in a long time. These units are very simple to use. There's not a lot of options and it's easy to just kind of get those images onto a computer so you can look at them again. I'll throw up some examples, but I'm not gonna do some really in-depth comparison between Scanza or slide and scan images against like a a lab scanner or even a flatbed scanner because they're very different audiences at the end of the day. These small units do not have a great quality in terms of not just how they're built, but also in the images that they can capture off of your film. But they can do 
it and it's easy enough to do it and put it on like a tablet and pull it out at the next family gathering. And for a lot of people, that's gonna be perfectly fine. The moment you want any real quality when it comes to digitizing film is the moment that you should be taking your film either to a professional lab or investing in a flatbed scanner or even a camera scanning setup because you can get good results at home using those systems. But that's when you start to increase the amount of money you're gonna invest into something like that, as well as the learning curve that's involved in using a scanner or a camera scanning setup, inverting color, using different programs, Lightroom, Negative Lab Pro, and just how you wanna go about doing that. And if you are just somebody who doesn't have a ton of technical know-how, just wants to see these images again, then these units are probably gonna be perfectly fine for you. Really, a lot of what I said two years ago in the Scanza video still applies to the slide and scan unit in terms of the quality that you're gonna get and who it's really for. The slide and scan's biggest improvement over the Scanza are probably the film holders. These are greatly improved and it feels much safer to put film into them without the concern of damaging them in the process. The screen on the slide and scan is nicer over the Scanza one. You can hook both of these things up to a TV or even an external monitor with the HDMI, but most people will end up relying on the screen, so the bigger the better, really. This unit also doesn't make the bold and completely misleading claim that it can handle Super 8 scanning like the Scanza does, though. The Scanza says it right on the box, 8mm, Super 8, but it's really not set up to handle that large amount of film, and at the very best, you can use it to capture some single frames off a large roll of Super 8. But if you wanna capture like a frame in the middle of a roll, then that's a lot of film to go through. It gets damaged, it's very small, and the stills that you can capture off of it look awful. No unit like this can scan a roll of movie film and give you a digital copy of that movie. Doing that sort of thing at home is difficult to get a good quality result. And especially with 16 millimeter, there's not like a unit that you can just go and buy. If you wanna do that for Super 8 or 8 millimeter at home though, you need to go check out the Wolverine 8 millimeter scanner or the newly released Kodak Reels which is a stupid name. The slide and scan also isn't a very good name because it kind of makes it seem like it only does slide film, but it doesn't. It will also handle negatives. It's just a stupid name. I kind of look forward to eventually picking up the Kodak slip and slide to pair up with my slide and scan. What it comes down to is if you're intent on buying something that just has that Kodak brand name slapped onto it, then I recommend the slide and scan over the Scanza. Really what I care about with these units is the potential for them to damage the film. In the Scanza does with its awful garbage film holders. And the slide and scan has a slight improvement over that and it feels like a little bit better. So I know at least I can take a quick look at something and then take it in or scan it in a different way that will give me actually good results. But if you wanna save a decent amount of money and you don't care about that Kodak brand name, then the Magnasonic all-in-one scanner is probably the exact same thing. I haven't tried one out and I don't think I really need to because I have a pretty good grasp on the quality of units like these. So uh, either shell out for the Kodak brand name or just buy a pretty much same unit for a cheaper price. Thank you so much for checking this out. Uh, I'd like to dedicate this video to the comment that I read once on the Scanza video that said I was too hard on the little unit. And you know what? I probably was. He's just so cute. You can find links in the description of this video below for ways to support this channel so that I can continue to eat and survive in this great city of Toronto. There's a Patreon, there's also some merch and all of that stuff just helps me to support the channel and continue doing this so that eventually I can make a video that is even better than the Codex Scans of video, though I don't even know how that's gonna be possible. Thanks so much for watching, I'll see you soon.